Hi folks and welcome back for another video. Um, what you have in, what you see in front of you is probably the quickest transmitter that I've ever built in terms of how long it's taken me. Probably started this over a weekend, probably not even that actually. And uh, it's what it's supposed to be is a replica of a 1930s transmitter. Now, back in the 1920s and the 1930s, am radio amateurs were were quite an interesting bunch of experimenters, and they didn't have access to all the Gucci electronic components we have uh, today and a lot of the stuff they had was basically as I said experimental and they used to pin things out on breadboards or bits of wood rather in a fashion that I've got here so this is what I've um, tried to do I've tried to sort of make it as sort of as vintage as possible uh, it's only got one valve and it does seem to work reasonably well. I've had a I've already had a few QSOs on it, so uh it's amazing what you can do with, you know, relatively few parts and uh it puts out quite a nice bit of uh useful power. I mean it's not uh kilowatts or anything, it's only ten watts, but it certainly does the job. Anyway, so what actually is it and how does it work? Well it's essentially just a crystal oscillator with uh, an 837 uh, valve and that's more or less it. Now I'm going to show you it in a bit more detail and we'll see if we can power it up and maybe get a few QSOs with it. Well, at least I can show you maybe getting one QSO. So let's just take a closer look So as mentioned this is just really a crystal oscillator and that's our crystal. Got one, got a couple there. In old in good old fashioned crystal holders. So it's got one crystal for 355A and another for 356A, which are the sort of frequencies that uh, are good for sort of low power CW. And Try to use mica capacitors for the decoupling capacitors. Uh, I have cheated a little bit actually. I did use use one or two sort of modernish resistors there, um, but I don't think anybody will criticise too much. That's the eight three seven, and then around the back there, we've got a. Um, plate choke and again quite a nice looking ceramic former gives a vintage look and then moving over here the output on this is actually a um, standard Pi network and I think that if you change that coil which is actually designed for 80 meters you could actually get this to work on certainly 40 meters, possibly 20 as well. And you'll see they've got some light bulbs down here. And these are just as an indication of aerial current to help tune it up. Back in the 1930s, meters had only just been invented. So people used to use light bulbs. So that's what I'm using there. And that's more or less it really. The plan is, is if, now that I've got this to work, I'll give you a quick demo. Is I might try and build, a bit later on, a Hartley oscillator in 1920s fashion. And that uh, will be even more vintage looking I think. But um, watch this space as they say. So we've got a separate receiver in the trusty trio key and 
That's a power supply which is from another project which I've rigged up to uh, supply the HT. Beauty of this rig, all it needs is a heater supply which in this case is 12 volts which is coming from my bench power supply and an HT supply which in this case is about 450 volts it gives out about 10 watts anyway let's um let's give it a quick test run see see what uh, what it sounds like all right let's quickly turn the ht on you can see we've got a little neon bulb there which uh, just lets us know that we we are well the chassis and the wires are all potentially live so we have to steer well clear of this right let's key it it doesn't sound too bad So we're getting about 10 to, 10 to 11 watts there, which is uh, not too bad. I'm just going to tune it up with the light bulbs. pretty good it's amazing how much power these bulbs actually take because my output power now has gone down to 4 watts so I'll short those light bulbs out with the uh, crop clip and then we should be good to go just for the health and safety amongst you there's no HT on it at the moment I think with this sort of gear you you know there is this risk of high voltage I mean there's no high voltage on the coil which a lot of vintage transmitters used to get you, you know where they were designed and uh, the way this is set up is that um, finally you keep your hands away from it when it's on it's uh, it's pretty safe I'm not keying any high voltages so uh, it's actually not too bad Just put out a CQ call and see what happens. Everybody comes back. Thing at the moment. Okay, we've got somebody here, G4ARI. I think I've worked in before, but I can't remember his name, so we'll, uh, we'll give him a quick call. Morning and many thanks for the call. Mm. Know that we worked before. Nice to meet you again RS 
MST. Five, seven, and nine. Name Justin. QTH. Swansea. Here. Rig is single valve power about 10 watts so I'll copy mm. what he has to say. Who needs speech? Just do it all on CW. Good morning Justin and thanks for report Yes. Wait a few times. Using a K2 5 watts and a dipole. Copy Tim. Many thanks. Report. Fine business. Fine business about your setup. Doing. Business job won't hold it. Will say many 
or so to see you again have a good Sunday, it is Sunday isn't it? It's empty threes and stay safe Fun business, Justin. Fun business. Fun business copy from your single valve rig. Weather sunny. Four degrees centigrade. Thanks for QSO. Some threes. Say safe on COVID. Seventy threes. See you again soon. Take care. So there we have it. A quick, quick QSO with Tim up there in Leicester, and uh, it just shows that you know you, this uh, setup works pretty well. It keys very well actually. And usually, these sort of rigs are. Uh, you know they're very simple, and um, you know they get you get problems with chirp, and and then the, the oscillator can suddenly stop oscillating, or it drifts, or becomes unstable. But uh, one thing I like about the 837, I think it, uh, although it doesn't run much power, I mean you could use an 8 an 807 in this, but I think uh, you might get more problems with chirp because you know you're pulling more grid current and stressing the crystal a bit. But um, an 837 was designed as an oscillator tube and it works really well for this and uh, so if you want to build something like this you know it's uh, it's relatively easy to do, it doesn't take very long It'll get you on the airways pretty easily with just 10 watts and um, yeah just be careful you know if, if you want to do it in this sort of style uh, you know just be careful with the high voltages um, that, but that's about really all I can say really but you know, it looks pretty vintage, it looks pretty cool. Anyway, there we go. Till the next time, thanks for watching.